Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Cassie Riva. I'm the Assistant Events Manager at an Unlikely Story Bookstore in Plainville, Massachusetts. Before we start, I just want to thank everyone for taking part in this event and showing support for the authors in our store. And I have a couple technical tips for you. If you have any issues with your video or audio quality, refresh your page. And if that doesn't work, log back in using Google Chrome as your browser. We're also streaming it on our Facebook page if you want to watch it there. Click the green button to order Judd's books. Hilo 8's gonna come up, gonna come with a really cool custom Hilo book plate that Judd autographed for you, which is awesome. Thank you, Judd. And we've hosted Judd Winnick a whole bunch of times now, and every single time is such a treat. Judd Winnick is the creator of the beloved New York Times bestselling Hilo series, but some of you might know him from MTV's The Real World San Francisco, where he was a cast member on the show in 1994, and also where he met his wife, Pam Ling. Before writing the Hilo series, Judd's graphic novel, Pedro and Me, published in 2000, and was based on his friendship with, the real, with his real world friend and AIDS activist, Pedro Zamora. Pedro and Me was awarded six American Library Association Awards, was nominated for an Eisner Award, won Judd his first GLAAD Award, and has been incorporated into school curricula across the country. Judd has written a ton of superhero comics, titles like Green Lantern, Green Arrow, Exile, Star Wars, Batman, Superman, Power Girl, The Justice League, the Justice League International, and Catwoman. Judd has also created an animated TV show named The Life and Times of Juniper Lee. He wrote the screenplay for Batman Under the Red Hood, the direct-to-DVD animated feature for Warner Premiere, and Judd was the head writer and producer on The Awesomes, an animated superhero comedy series created by Seth Meyers and Mike Shoemaker for Hulu. Tonight, Judd is going to share the eighth installment in his action-packed, fun middle-grade graphic novel series, Hilo, Gina, and the Big Secret. And let me tell you, Hilo fans, you're not going to be disappointed. This book is so fun. Interviewing Judd Winnick tonight is the number one New York Times bestselling author of the Diary of a Wimpy Kid series and owner of an unlikely story bookstore, an unlikely story bookstore and cafe, Jeff Kinney. Judd, Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to pull you up. Hi. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Hi. Hello. Thank you very much, Cassie, uh, for that great introduction. Yeah, and thank you. It's great to see you again, Judd. I have to say I was so excited when I woke up this morning and was reminded that I was going to get to interview you tonight. So thank you very much. This is your third time coming to an unlikely story. It's virtual this time, of course, but thank yeah. you so much for being our guest again. It is absolutely my pleasure. Um, I hope we get to do it in person next year. Fingers <laughs> crossed. This is fine. This is cool. I love talking to you from the, you know, the the comfort of my basement studio, but I would I would love to see you all in person soon. Yeah. So it's good to be back. Thank you, sir. I was just listening to that bio of you and and you know, we talked about this before we got on the air tonight. Um, I was a viewer of the real world San Francisco back when I was in my young 20s. And I saw this guy named John Winnick, and he, he wanted to be a cartoonist just like I did, a comic strip artist, a little yeah. bit different. Imagine if somebody had read you that bio then uh, of all these things you were doing, you know, uh, you know, writing for TV, writing for comic books, on and on and on, and writing books, graphic novels. You probably wouldn't have even heard that term back then unless you yeah. you know, the Sandman. But what do you think? Like, isn't this wild that you've gotten to do all of these things in comics? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think I go back and forth between if you would have told the young me that that happened, like, he, he would have been so full of himself. He would have said, oh, but of course. <laughs> right. That sounds about right. That goes according to plan. Uh, but at the same time, I don't know. We're like living the life. You know, it's just really, uh, as I mean, when, when, when I was a kid, uh, I used to sit in front of the TV and uh, make things up and draw them. And now I'm 52 and I make things up and draw them while I half watch television. And that's my job, yeah. you know, to today. I'm like, what, like, like right before we got on, what am I doing? I'm finishing drawing, you know, my book. It's, it's just a bunch of monsters, big googly eyes and a giant butt. And like, that's my job. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. You know, and I've, and I've had the opportunity to like, you know, do my own TV shows and write Batman. It's just, it's, it is absolutely a little bit nuts. It is um, crazy. Yeah. yeah. When you get a moment there where, like you're saying, you wrote Batman, you know, to me, I'm a consumer. I'm a, I'm a reader. I'm a fan. 
And when I see a Batman movie, it's like, that's Batman. Batman exists. I never think, boy, I could, I could tell Batman what to do. You know, <laughs> it's like, does that, does that break it for you in a way? Like, does it, because of course we use our imagination. We believe that these worlds exist. Like when, when you get the reins and you can say, you write the words that come out of Batman's mouth, does it change it for you in a way? Well, yes and no. Two, two things. One, I'm of the opinion that all, all us folks writing superhero comics, it's just fan fiction. We're yeah. all just finally getting to like get to play with the toys. Like I finally get to do Batman. I finally get to do Superman. And it's like the stuff you thought of when you were a kid. Now you actually get to make it happen. And it's like for real, like literally like stories I thought about for years and years. I finally had the opportunity to do that. Um, but when you're, when you're actually doing it, like I, I, I think even more so than, than ba Batman and one of my early like Green Lantern stories, like I introduced Superman into the story. And like, I'm actually gonna write words coming out of Superman's mouth. And like, I had a moment like, oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say these things on the, on the, like I've been typing in my computer and like five months from now, I'm gonna see it on the page and Superman's gonna say what I'm saying. Ah, it's, it, it is still, you're, you're very much like the kid in the candy store. Um, and I don't really feel cool. like, yeah, it, 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 it is yet, it is yet to ruin it. Like I'm just yeah. as excited about the new Batman movie you know, as I was, you know, back in 89 when the yeah. Michael Keaton Batman movie came out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now yeah. the stuff's everywhere. It's so mainstream. It's like, it's the greatest. I can't even, that I can't believe half the time either. Yeah, that's cool. So I love Gina and the Big Seeker. I know we're not just here to talk about Batman. No, so no, I, <laughs> I love this book. I love these this book series. Now, Hilo really did have an end. All the pieces did fit at the end of the, la of the Hilo story arc. And you continued on. Tell me what it was like to make that decision to shift the focus from Hilo to Gina, and 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 how has that changed your writing? Okay, I'm going to be really honest because I'm talking with you. Uh, way back, way back when, so uh, so like uh, in uh, 2014 or so, when I was first uh, first working on the Hilo book, and uh, I got this wonderful deal to uh, Random House is going to publish it, and I was talking with my editor Shana Corey, uh, and she's saying, so it's going to be a series. This is my editor. Like, how many books do you think there'll be in, in the Hilo series? I said, oh, I don't know. I was thinking like 20. You know, <laughs> I was thinking like, like every book would be like a different monster that he's going to fight and we'll slowly, un, you know, unweave this mystery of his. And she goes, okay, okay, 20. That's a healthy number. That's good. That's good. I mean, and you figure at the end of the story, like, we're going to learn all the mysteries about where Hilo's from and who he is. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She says, okay, okay, 20. Again, it's a healthy number. The thing is, you're averaging about a book a year. Mm -hmm. So by the if a 10-year-old is reading the first Hilo book, yeah. they're going to be 30 when you're finally done. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, so maybe I should do less. Like, if you want to, if you want it, if you want to do less. So I sat down and thought about it, and I broke it down. It's like, okay, I think I tell this whole story in six books. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Yeah. Uh, Hilo's would be six books and done. And then the first book came out. And it did really, really well. And my editor mentioned in passing, like, you know, if you wanted to do more than six, we could do that too. It's like, I, but no, all I got is all I got is six. And then Shana said, well, you know, do they all die at the end? It's like, no. It's like, okay, you'll think of something. So with that in the back of my head, it's like, okay, what happens after I'm done with this first big story arc of, of Hilo? And in there, the story kind of came up like, oh, what about Gina? And when I was playing with it, like, oh, no, then, what if Gina gets magical powers? And then somewhere around the third book, like, okay, when I'm done with this first story arc of of Hilo, then we'll pivot and it'll be it'll be about Gina. And that's what it got into my head. That's it's like back to superheroes. It's like a superhero team book, yeah. you know, like they're part of a team. And you know, so this first you know six issues we're focusing on Superman, and the next six issues we'll focus on Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. You know, they're still part of the team, but someone else is going to carry the ball for a little while. And yeah. When I started thinking about that, it did. It like it freed everything up. It's like, oh, this will be fun. And I'll start like putting things in there, it'll feed to the next story. Yeah, it's really cool. And I was reading this book, and of course, I read the last book because I interviewed you about it. And I was thinking, yep. boy, if I if I flip to page, you know, if I flip to the start of this story and I did and I hadn't read the last book, I would be like, what on earth is going on? <laughs> when, when this story starts, what on earth is going on? 
pictures. <laughs> and I'll show you a picture just for any kid that's curious about them. What, you know, you look at that image and you're like, okay, this one is starting in a different way than most books. So tell us what's going on at the start of Gina and the Big Super. Oh, well, uh, it's a minor spoiler, but I don't mind it. Uh, so what has happened? So Gina, for those playing at home, she has uh, she's able to do magic. And uh, if you read the last book, things kind of got upended on Earth. And uh, basically the entire world has remade itself as a world that's ruled by magic. So uh, she blames herself. <laughs> the, the last book was called Gina, the girl who broke the world because she did. Yeah. It was kind it was a little bit her fault. Uh, so now she's going to have to fix it. She had to put all the entire world back. Um, and it was a fun book to do because, you know, I got to do an entirely different setting and magical creatures everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was fun. It was like a big, it was a big rollicking adventure. And for me, I, I mean, I, I like to change it up. Yeah. Um, I don't want to do the same story over and over again. So I wanted it to be very, very different from the first, uh, the first Hilo story arc. Yeah. Um, so, and it feels like we've done it. We were doing that. Yeah. That it's cool. It's great. It's so, it's, it's so fresh and it, you, there's so much imagination poured into it. I, I think one of the best, the things that you're the very best at is writing you're a graphic novelist, and yet the DNA uh, of these stories is in the joke telling. It's in it's in comic strips, right? It really is the way that you deliver a joke is really different from other authors. And can you talk talk about how your experience being a comic strip artist helps you in this medium? It's 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 funny you bring that up. I mean, that's that is the honest to goodness truth. I uh, I you know I draw like uh like like a goofy comic strip i love jokes like a comic strip and i like it to be loaded with humor i mean that was the sort of thing that i didn't i didn't know if people would necessarily take to it like we're going to do an action adventure story that kind of feels like a comic strip um you know jeff smith did it with bone i thought that was always an excellent example like that looks like really really cartoony like but uh like in disney-esque in that way uh but i do always get that feeling if things get a little bit too serious uh even at the most tense moments like somebody should be in here like having a laugh it should be a little bit it always should be a little bit fun because that's that's the stuff i like i yeah. mean even the, the the most serious of action adventures i like when they yuck it up a little bit right you know, even you know anything from like lord of the rings to star wars you know you name it you know to any of the marvel movies like the marvel movies are funny you know yeah. they, they really they, they they go for a lot of jokes and i like that i like yeah. that it was really funny in Justice League how they had to. They were worried they weren't very funny, and that they made a new cut where they added these jokes that just didn't belong. Um, that yeah, it's like well, I think in that case, like yeah, we want to make it more like you know, like the Avengers. It's like okay, doesn't exactly work by just you know, you can't do a polish. <laughs> right. So you know, I, I I I've noticed a lot of your kind of influences in your books. Uh, one of them was that I was like, man. The style of these comics is something familiar. And then right when I was done, I read your bio and I see that you're a big Bloom County fan. And so was yeah. I. Um, I see a lot of Bloom County like jokes in here, which is cool. I like the way that you deliver uh, your jokes. And people are saying on the right hand side, I don't think Jeff can see this. Yes, we can see all of your comments and we will include <laughs> you guys, in, I promise. <laughs> But first, first, us grown-ups are gonna do boring talk, and then we'll get to the. <laughs> so they're saying they're talking. About, it's a couple of cartoonists talking about cartoons. Are they gonna talk about like like which which computer programs they they uh they draw on, or like, <laughs> yeah. like you know when they used to draw on cardstock paper? Are they gonna get into that next? We might. We, we just know. might. That's there true. might be ten minutes on Pigma Micron markers coming at you pretty soon. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I noticed what we were talking about influences, and yeah. I, I noticed at least three Star Wars jokes in your uh, in, in your latest book. I was wondering what, what what was that like for you as a kid? Like when you when you first got introduced to the Star Wars universe, what was that like for you as a kid? And then I wanted to know what is what's it like now? Can you still buy into it? like when you sit down in the theater and watch something that says Star Wars on the opening crawl? Can you get back to that place that you were when you were a kid? 100 percent uh i mean uh i am 52 so i saw star wars when i was seven years old in the theater yeah um so it's part of my emotional dna and uh it's funny that i uh it's 
it wasn't I, I kind of feel like it wasn't until like we were like in our 20s or so where Star Wars made like sort of a comeback and we were like we're reaching adulthood and people started talking about it how how much it meant to them and how important it was because it kind of went away for a while you know even though it's always there yeah. but it was before you could rent it all the time or whatnot it's but it's um with everyone that that comes out from the the, the new trilogy to the Mandalorian to Book of Boba Fett uh I mean you know I mean, goodness, here, look, all you gotta do is look over my shoulder. Who that there? <laughs> yeah. That is just like one of 25 Yodas. <laughs> I was gonna say in the house, but there's there's a bunch. I mean, I, I can reach over here and grab three more. There's a baby Yoda <laughs> there. There's a Funko Mandalorian with the Yoda there. Um, I can totally get in there and completely suspend my disbelief and I am fully emotionally there every time. And I think, I think a lot of it just has to do like Star Wars is Star Wars. And also I was a kid the first time I saw it and it really, it just imprinted on me. Um, and it still informs me as a storyteller. It's still, you know, uh, I, I would love to, you know, I would love to do a story that resonates with kids as much as Star Wars resonated with me. I mean, that's, that's the hope. Yeah. A new hope. Yes. Indeed. Yeah. Puns intended. There we go. <laughs> One of the things that I love about your books is that it feels like you're getting more and more inventive at drawing monsters. Like I, I feel like there's something, especially, especially as you it, as you've gone along. Especially you can see it. You're flexing your muscles more and more. And I'm just sort of um, I'm sort of blown away for it by it. I don't have that talent at all. And we're getting uh, so many kids on the right hand side are asking for some some drawings and I think it would be a good time to take a talking break and get into a drawing. Uh, sure. <laughs> do some drawing. I wanted to see like, okay, so I was thinking about some of these monsters, uh, really mm -hmm. great stuff here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to flip to one of one of my favorites. He's the green guy that sort of pops out of the ground. Do you remember where he is by chance? Uh, oh, uh, he, no, but it's it's it's, uh, when, it's when they get to the forest. Yeah, it's when they get um, to the forest. That's right. So I think it's I think it's towards the back of the book. Yeah, I found him. So I, I love this guy right here. And it's <laughs> he's like a, a living piece of broccoli. But he, he you, you know you can see that guy come come to life. I was wondering what's it like when so you come to this page. You know you want a monster to come out of the ground. How do you mm -hmm. you just start to draw? Do you um, think about what attributes they have. We'd love to see you create a new monster today. Oh, well, happy to do a new monster. Uh, but thank you. I'm glad you like the monsters because I put I put a significant amount of work into the monsters here and there. I mean, some of them just play for jokes. Others, you know, for a Star Wars reference, there's an entire cantina bar scene in there <laughs> where uh, I just wanted to fill the page with as much as I could. Um, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's, I think what I try to do with monsters is like, just kind of get out of the box a little bit. Like how far can you go? Mm -hmm. It's like, they don't, okay. So do they, do they need just two eyes or can they have like five? Can they have like crab arms? Maybe like, what's the clothes they wear? You know, does he dress like a biker, you know, you know, or like on the flip side, does he dress like he's like on a bicycle? Like really dorky, mm -hmm. like, you know, like, you know, elbow pads and a helmet to protect himself. Just yeah. as, as fun and as weird as you want. Well, I'm so gonna have with that. Yes, you let's have the kids on the one? side just uh, toss out some words. What do you want to see here? Uh, and and I think uh, Judd's going to use some of his imagination and some of these words that you guys put on the right hand side of the screen. And we haven't had Jeff, any... you choose you you choose the words. Tell me what you, tell me what uh, you should do. You you pick you, you pick out the choices. And I'll go to work there. I just saw bananas. I know it wasn't an answer to this question, but you can use that as inspiration. Um, okay, bananas. That's one thing. Most All right. People, yeah, most people are just saying, well, we had 10 eyes, carrot. Uh, we saw Greg meeting Hilo. That's that's for a different thing. Uh, a space mm -hmm. dolphin, um, <laughs> a spaghetti, a tree monster, Hilo eating rocks, moose head, purple, unscrupulous, <laughs> unscrupulous, Gina. Okay, dog, yellow. You take all, all right, of that all right. and you don't have to include everything, of course. Well, let me see what I can get here. I, 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 like, I, like, the idea of, 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 I like the idea of a banana which yeah. is which is a weird shape um that alone is a good place to start yeah um and uh i like doing multiple eyes i will tell you the, the trouble when i do multiple eyes is i never know exactly what to do with the eyebrow <laughs> of the middle eye 
it's always a little bit I'll, I'll give it a shot here but it's always a little bit confusing of what what to kind of do in there um and uh also a la bloom county as well as yeah. calvin and Hobbes. yeah nothing cracks me up more than having somebody yelling <laughs> like you know when and if you go through hilo if you go through there when the characters are opening their mouths in a big big way and screaming yeah that's when i'm absolutely at my my, my happiest <laughs> that is my happy place and where did you and, learn to draw did you go to schools did you pick up books at the library like how did you do this i'd say my first my first lessons in drawing were i i just copied cartoons yeah like the first like i copied garfield mm. uh like i when i was like about seven or eight is when garfield came out and i just i i thought it was the funniest thing i'd ever seen uh i read the uh second the the, the second garfield book because yeah. uh, it wasn't even in my paper yet and i read it over and over again and i started just by by copying garfield so i could finally do it by memory and um and often you know what when i when i talk to young people about like drawing and how you learn how to draw a lot of grown-ups say you shouldn't copy stuff mm. you just like like you know no no do original stuff like no find the stuff you love yeah. and then just you know and then just copy it and copy it long enough that you get comfortable with it and then yeah. you'll do it for memory and then you'll branch out from there and do your own stuff yeah um like okay so he's got roller skates and yeah no arms yet we did ask what somebody, what what should he be in his arms gang what should he be holding what should we be have doing? A, a spear a sorcerer's stone we have a uh we had a staff uh horns uh terabelle lee really wants that hat uh but he's sort okay. of already got a banana hat um hang on we can make things work here for one i like yeah. the idea of a i like the idea of a staff hang on and I, I like that that he's he's off the ground right he's he, that that suggests a lot of motion a lot of life uh to this i don't know where I, again like i don't know where i stole this gag yeah I forget where the first time i saw it you know the idea like and and it is it's like super evocative when you have them right off the ground yeah you know what it means like it, it just does something um yeah. so thank you for bringing that up um <laughs> i also do that one a lot um oh, great. So our, like our our banana's got he's a staff with a magical apple at the top of it as one does um <laughs> i like we'll that. put horns on here because i actually like horns yeah and uh i've actually in <laughs> it was only in this book in this high in this in this most recent hilo book that i discovered like oh i like it when when horns go kind of upside down mm -hmm. like yeah. these crescent roll ones that go upside down yeah uh and so i did i probably did too many of them in the most <laughs> recent book you know, you had a lot of fun in this book because you actually turned your main cast into monsters, right? Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> um, I, when I was planning this book, I started thinking about, uh, well, again, I don't like doing the same thing over and over again. So mm -hmm. I started kicking around the idea that maybe the characters will like wear different outfits or something, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but then I kick it, it just clicked in my brain like, hey, what if they have to like turn into like magical monsters like oh goodness then i don't have to draw them i'll draw right. totally different characters right for, for the whole book and yeah so uh there, there's the upside down crescent rolls on yeah. uh on lisa's head and hilo just turned into a big bag of hair right so he kind of yeah, right looks like a wookie so he was super easy to draw on that like he just looks like cousin it which is a reference yeah. that only you and i get um yeah yeah but it, it was just it was a lot of fun just to just to mix it up a little bit this is one of my bit. this is one of my favorite pages we have lots of stuff going on in the monster forest and i was wondering you know i i'm gonna be honest with you since we're speaking honestly like when sure. I, when i see your drawings when i open up a hilo book it makes me feel a lot of stress do you <laughs> can you guess why it makes me stress out to open up a hilo book no, which that is the antithesis <laughs> of what I'm going for, sir. I, I want you to open up Hilo and just like and just you know and just chill. All right, what are you worried they're in danger? What what is what's, what's be, why stress? It's it's because I know, I, I I have a feeling I know what work goes into this. Like you know, <laughs> as a reader reads this, you you spend about you know twenty seconds per page or something like this. But that's right. Not what it's like to create it, right? That page, tell us how long it took to create that spread, for example. Oh, let's Real see. Uh, 
you know, we'll talk about the the couple of days that's rolling around in my head to write it. Yeah. Then there's penciling it, which probably, you know, um, took took anywhere between a couple hours to a whole day. And then, you know, uh, on a really, really, really good day, I can probably pencil three pages. Uh, on an exceptionally good day, I might be able to ink four or five. So wow, the books are the books are about a year of work. So when yeah. folks blast on through them in about an hour, it's like, yeah, yeah. okay. You could read slower yeah. or read it again. That was that was a year. <laughs> and, and now there are so many memorable characters. You're always introducing new characters, which kind of cracks me up because then you have to keep carrying that group of characters along with you in the story. Um, and there yeah, are it's always a, it's a new kettle of fish every time. It's like, yeah. okay, so now I got this guy and I got to keep this guy in the store. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always with a little bit of trepidation, like introducing somebody new. Right. And, like, and so... Like in this one, the band got pretty big. Yes, it did. <laughs> Tell us about Philip Ignatius Sebastian Akorimako. Yes, okay, for those oh, playing at home. So if you know Polly, who was our magical talking cat, yeah. uh, Polly brought her little brother along, who mm -hmm. is, uh, who's an apprentice uh, a sorcerer as well. Like she, she, she's in training, but part of her training is that she's got to uh, bring along a little, uh, uh, someone who needs to learn magic as well. In this case, it's her brother Pip, mm -hmm. who's even louder and angrier than she is, which was a lot of fun for me. I mean, if you look, yeah. like, you know, he pretty much eats and yells, and that's and that just cracks me up. Um, <laughs> so when this character is speaking, what should I hear? Is it a Scottish accent? Like, yeah, is it new. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, they're Scottish. Yeah, they're Scottish. And when when you're actually writing the dialogue, do you hear it? Do you hear each one of these characters in your head? Oh, absolutely. More, uh, to be honest, more Polly than anybody else because she's got this fun accent. Um, so, uh, I mean, that was that was kind of how, when I first envisioned her, when I was first coming up with the character and she started yelling for the first time, it's like, oh, she's like kind of loud and Scottish. I don't know why she's Scottish, but it sounds funny to me. Um, and uh, and they, they they just they just put out the uh, Hilo uh, Hilo uh, Hilo uh, graphic novels are now available on audio, so we have audio books. So you actually oh, get nice. to hear. Yeah, no. So some folks are actually performing Polly, uh, so you get to hear her in all her Scottish glory, and it like, just kills me. Kills me. Uh, one of, one of the many things that you're great at is coming up with sound effects. Here's a big bam <laughs> right here. Lots and lots of sound effects for all sorts of different weird things that happen in your books. And I'm going to give you a challenge, Judd. So I'm going sure. to name an action, and you tell me what sound you hear. You don't have to draw okay. anything. Just, I'm going to tell you an action. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Yep. 100 pounds of spaghetti fall from the sky onto someone's roof. What's the sound that that makes? Oh, uh... I would do a do a a, a kablop. <laughs> so it would be like yeah. So you'd be like K A, uh, B L, uh, probably a double O B. Um, <laughs> you know, nice and big. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I I do pride my. I, I mean, it, it means a lot to me that you picked out the sound effects. Oh yeah. I do. I I don't take them lightly, and I don't <laughs> like. You can see a blam or a pal, but you know that's fine. You know, yeah. but you really want, you kind of want to dig in there a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. How about, uh, here's round two. A gelatinous monster is impaled by a giant crossbow bolt. Oh, um, I would prop, uh, storp. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, you know, storp. Uh, yeah. So, like, S-H-T-O-R-P. Maybe a T at the end. Okay. Depending yeah. if depending if the uh, the arrow landed into something behind the gelatinous monster. Ah, yeah. So sometimes you have you have to have one sound effect that kind of covers all three things. How about this? I'm yes. not sure if you can create one sound effect for this, uh, but I'm gonna say a cyclops slaps another cyclops on the back, and the one that gets slapped, his eyeball flies out of his head onto the ground. Is that three different <laughs> sound effects or one sound effect? That'd be three, and actually, it'd be more than one shot. For one, I I would think I think the funnier sound effect for him, like patting him on the back, would be like the most pedestrian one, like a mm -hmm. little like pet pep, 
you know, like, little, like little, yeah, yeah, little whop, little pep. And then um, the eye popping out, uh, uh, definitely like a ping pong ball noise, like a talk, <laughs> to, like a T-O-K. Yeah. Like that, I, want, I want to get that one coming out. And uh, mm, then depending on where it lands, you know, I mean, I wouldn't want to make a kind of a fleshy noise hitting the ground because that gets gross. So it might be like, yeah. it, it might be like hard, like, you know, peck, 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 you know. In the next uh, panel, you see, see, it roll, see, it. see it roll off. And then, you know, one-eyed side cops turning to his buddy. Like, thank you. Like, Sorry. <laughs> like, my, my bad. My oh, bad. Yeah. My bad. As he goes to get it. Yeah. And we had Thomas Con Connolly said pep. And Harry said blat. <laughs> uh, we have a talk. And, and somebody keeps saying hat. But that's a whole different conversation. All right. What we're going <laughs> to do. I'm sure it's dri driving the kids crazy right now to see you, a very talented cartoonist, in front of a blank. Uh, drawing tablet. So what we're going to do is we uh -huh. are going to let's Cassie. Do you think it's risky? We could we could bring a kid onto the screen who really wants to see something drawn. What do you think about that? We don't often bring kids onto the screen. It's definitely risky, but let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely risky. Okay, um, here we go. We're gonna let's look at for somebody who said ask a question. There are a bunch of questions in the queue, but I'm sure uh, in, in we won't be able to get to any of them. Actually, you know what, Cassie, while you pull someone in, I'm going to ask all 24 questions in rapid fire. Judd, you or I cannot use any more words than are absolutely necessary. Are you ready? Yeah. Any talk about turning Hilo into a movie or TV show? Can I talk about it? Uh, I'm, I'm, we are talking to people about it. Yes. Cool. Uh, it's, we're talking to folks about it. Will DJ get his own part? Uh, meaning of is DJ going to be the protagonist in one of the story arcs? Uh, not exactly. That's my mm. answer. Just here. not exactly. Hi. Okay, we have somebody here. We didn't get through twenty-five. That's for sure. Or we did two, <laughs> we, and we'll get to more. Hi, Matthew Graham. How are you doing tonight? Uh, nice, Owen. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Owen. Owen Graham using my oh, account. Ah, uh, Owen. Oh. Very nice to meet you, Owen. Is there anything? Good to meet you. you. Is there anything you would like to ask Judd? Or is there anything you would like for Judd to draw, for me to draw? Like, what's your, so you've got the stage. Uh, let's hear what uh, you want. Uh, I have this funny idea to just uh, draw something eating grass, because I think it'd be funny from the joke from the series. Anything eating grass. That would be good. <laughs> I, don't know why I think it's funny. <laughs> Judd? I'm with you. That's why, it, yes. In, 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 in book one, Hilo ate grass. I often have people eating things they're not supposed to be eating. That kind of cracks me up. Um, <laughs> So, uh, uh, let me Something think. Let me think. Grass or Hilo. Uh, let me let me just let me just do Hilo. Okay. Hilo with a with a with, with a big old with a big old pile of. And, and feel free to ask me a question while I draw this. <laughs> yes, I was going to keep going through. You ready? Here we sure. go. Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Three. Who is the first character that you drew in the Hilo series? Oh, um, I want to say Hilo, but it might have been DJ. Ah, gotcha. um, yeah. And so somebody knows the Wings of Fire reference, a reference on page eight. Uh, the five dragons <laughs> match the five dragonettes from the series just about perfectly. Was this intentional? Yes. Yes. Oh, oh my goodness. Nailed it. Wow. And that was Matthew um, Graham. That was Matthew So Graham. I got to tell you, so oh, Wings of Fire was in there. So Marta Leho, who was our, who's uh, my colorist on, yeah. um, on Hilo. She also colors Wings of Fire. So at one point I had dragons flying over. I said, do them up. Marta, do do the dragons. I'm sure I'm sure you've had plenty of practice. So I'm sorry. I had to stop because y'all caught that. That's awesome. All right. <laughs> that was Owen who, who was just on the same screen. Um, and here we go. We see somebody. Let's see. I have to hide this. All right. We have a kid. His name is probably not Harry. What's your name? Yeah, Harry. It is Harry. Okay, Harry. Harry, and my name is not Harrison or Harris. It's just Harry. Okay, just Harry. No problem. That's what's on your birth certificate, right? <laughs> yes, probably. All what right. I was listening at Harrison. Okay. I don't know Harry, why. you're on the line with world famous cartoonist Judd Winnick. Let's have your question. Um. Hmm. <laughs> no. Harry's gonna get his question from someone else, maybe. Well, Harry, what, what are you really curious about? You know, Do you, you were think the there's gonna be another Hilo book after the tenth book. Great question. Um, yeah. Uh, so you mean after we finish up with uh, with Gina 
uh, the Gina trilogy? Uh, yeah. Yes, I'll even tell you. So there's a, the ninth Hilo book, which is the, uh, the, the third Gina book, which comes out next year. That's going to be called, um, that is Gina and uh, the Last City on Earth. So oh. That's book nine. And book 10 is Hilo book 10, The Rise of the Cat. That's all I'll tell you. <laughs> How do you yeah. have all of this planned out after you just released the eighth book? Wow. Say again? How do you have this? How do you have planned? all of this planned after you just released the eighth book? Oh, because I'm, you know, I'm uh right over there is my drafting, right over there is my drafting table, and I'm okay. finishing up book nine. So the last six months I've been thinking about um book ten and what we're gonna do next and the whole next trilogy. Mm -hmm. I mean it's the fun of being able to like you finish writing a story and then you get to draw it. So the the hard part of coming up with the ideas is done. So now I, I just kind of walk around and I start thinking about the next story. Oh, so that's cool. where that comes from. Last year for Halloween, I was Hilo. Oh, cool. No. Were you I right? even got hamster balls to be the little blasters. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Right. I know, Thanks, I finish Gary. up Hilo's ear. Okay. <laughs> Good to see you, buddy. So Judd, you will be uh, tickled to know perhaps that I have a book coming out in October and today i just came up with the idea for it right so that's i but i've but i've played it a lot closer to the wire i had a, a book i came up with in december and it I, and basically the last day of december i came up with the idea for it and the book came out on april 1st so that was the fastest i've ever put together a book it's crazy that's crazy <laughs> that is crazy i mean you know i think we've talked about this before i mean part of it i think um the writing of it which does take me the longest is a couple of months. Yeah. And uh, then then the drawing is just labor. I've often thought about like, what, what happens if I, just, if I just bang one out? <laughs> if, you know, um, you know, just try, try to move as fast as I can. I, I, but I found like, it's things like, it's things like, you know, suddenly I got a book that's got like a hundred monsters in it. And like, that's just gonna take me a while. I just gotta come up with new monsters and like, you know, this one's gonna have a furry collar and this one's gonna have giant feet and, and suddenly I'm designing stuff and it's, um, but at some point I might try to do one, like, like let me do one as fast as I can and see what comes out. Yeah. Unfortunately, it might yeah, come out like looking it. like this and like, no, 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 no. Right. <laughs> All right, Sawyer, we have two kids on, so we're, we're gonna try something here. First of all, Sawyer, what is your question? You're the legendary Sawyer. You're, you're a Patriots fan, right? Awesome. So tell us what your question is for Judd. Um, I don't know. Um, or any question. It's okay. You got two yeah. folks in this. We, we have the um, same birthday. Not not Judd, just you. Oh, really? Oh, that's really cool. Is yours also uh, February 19th? Yeah. It's coming right up. That's really cool. Yeah. And do you live here in New England? You don't have to say exactly where, but in Massachusetts? Hopkinton. Oh, cool. You're not too far. You have to come to the bookstore, an unlikely story. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Sawyer. It, and we're going to, do you have a question? Um, after he, can you draw? Like, yeah, I'll draw something. Yeah. So let's, uh, so we're going to say goodbye to you. I'll draw. And we're going to ask uh, Connor or whoever owns Connor J's computer, um, what uh what you'd like to ask and thank you i see some wimpy kid books there on the show <laughs> man kind of like that yeah of culture and taste what do you got connor um i have a question for both of you yeah mm -hmm. so is there go are you gonna make more wimpy kid books Yes, I am just like Judd. If something is working, I'm going to keep doing it again and again. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely working on another Wimpy Kid book uh, now. I'd love to do a book of comics. My favorite type of comics are really bad comics, um, and I'm really good at doing really bad comics. So I'm hoping to uh, to do a whole book full of bad comics. So great question, <laughs> And um, so, thank you very much. And we're gonna we're gonna bring one more kid onto the screen. Are you ready, Cassie? There we go. Yes. Give me one minute. Right. Judd, I'm trying here. I'm not as good as you, that's for sure. But I'm trying here. Here's a three. No, you're doing well. And you know what? What I like about it, it's it's as clean as a whistle. <laughs> yeah. And you use you use pencil and paper, pen and ink, right? 
No, I went, I went digital. Yeah. Um, I actually do it fully on my iPad. Um, wow. A couple, a couple you, of books ago. And here we are doing exactly what we said we wouldn't do, talking about yep. what tools we use. What do you use? Procreate? I, 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 yeah, I finish it up in Procreate. I actually use this really great program, which I recommend for kiddos uh, yeah. when, when I do the rough draft. Yeah. Um, and also I pencil it. It's called Comic Draw. Huh. So, and it's a really like a super easy app. And right. I, yeah, and I, and by the way, I should mention, I got no skin in this game. Huh. <laughs> I, I, I use the app like anyone else. This is not, this is, this is an endorsement just coming from, I actually use it. Yeah. Um, what I love about it is how quickly you can move. Uh, yeah. You can throw up panels real quick. You can do it in pencil. The huh. lettering is super easy. And uh, then I just transfer everything over to Procreate and I ink it in Procreate. Uh, yeah. That's really cool. I'll have to check that one out. I need, I need something new. I, I use it, I do everything through animes and, and stuff like that. So it takes me a long time to draw my vector drawings in those programs. All right, we have a kid on the screen. Milo, hey, buddy. How are you? The kid or the Good. Kid? What do you got, Milo? Do you have a question? Um, so my question is, will DJ ever get powers? Ooh. Did DJ ever get powers? I'm gonna I'm gonna answer for the moment. Probably not. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that is I kind of feel like DJ is is us, whereas like Hilo's got powers and Gina's got powers. DJ kind of represents us, and it sort of feel like DJ might be the one hero in the story who doesn't need powers. Mm -hmm. I will say, as the story goes on, and we I've I've started getting into it a little bit. Who DJ is and what he and what he brings to the story is going to become more and more important. Uh, he was very, very important in the beginning, and he sort of, if you if you if you look throughout the story, everything happens around DJ and because of him. And we're going to be getting into that more and more. But again, he might be, again, he might be just our our one hero who doesn't have powers because he doesn't need them. I like your okay. question, Milo. Do you like DJ? Is that the is that the character that you really get? Uh, that, who that you really enjoy? I like the most? I like all the characters. Wow, that's like really it. cool. I I yeah. really like the books so much that I dressed up as Hilo for Halloween. <laughs> Did, yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. I never get tired I, of hearing I, that. Honestly, if if you would have right. told me, kid, honestly, kid, if you would have told me as a kid that I'd come up with the character that that kiddos would get dressed up as. And Halloween, that would have blown my mind more than anything else. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> and Milo, uh, so Judd says that we don't, he, no, DJ's like us. We don't have powers. But he can speak for himself and for you, but he can't speak for me because I can show you. I can make you disappear. Are you ready? On the <laughs> three. You ready? It's one, two, three. See? Oh, witchcraft. Oh, oh, oh. scary. <laughs> it's scary. Bad. I can't really reappear, but you know, I can I can vanish anybody, including you, Judd, in, in just two minutes. I'm gonna make you go away as well. Okay. Um, so Judd, anything so you've told us a lot about what your uh what's coming up for you. My big question, my big last question for you is I'm really interested. Is that you seem to have like a child's imagination. You seem to be able to tap into that thing that I was able to tap into as a kid, but I can't tap into now very easily. Is it hard? Do you have to work at it or is it easy for you? Um, I, 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 I guess, I guess it's easy for me, but I would say that I have no other usable skills. <laughs> I mean, I just, I, I, I don't really, I don't really operate on any, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm bad at so many other things. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible at math. I'm, I'm deeply disorganized in every other way. Um, I've got a really, uh, my attention spans not terrific, uh, but you know, but I, I can make things up. Uh, that's always what I've been like pretty good at. I mean, I, I, I'd like to think that, um, well, it wasn't. It wasn't that everything. It wasn't anything I ever planned on doing. I, I wanted to do just like you. We, we've talked about this a lot. I wanted to do a comic strip. Mm -hmm. That is all I ever wanted to do. That was my. That was my life's goal, until I was. I mean, it's true for both of us. Until we were like in our twenties or so, and then realized like, okay, the comic strip thing isn't going to happen. Let me figure out another way that I can take this little skill set of drawing pictures and making jokes and make it into something. And it wound up being. 
very much the same thing, just in a different form. So yeah. um, with that, um, I think what I got to tap into, we were talking about Star Wars, that I always loved the idea of like telling big stories, but I never thought I was going to be able to do it. I was thought, like, I'll do a comic strip, you know, but I'll never be able to do like a superhero story or anything like that's not that's not me. Yeah. Um, well, I'm so glad you've taken your talents and, and put them into these books. I can't wait to see what you do next. And I've seen online all these kids who are Hilo fans. I'm sure there are millions of Hilo fans across the world. Many of them are logged on tonight. I'm sorry that we can't get to everybody's questions. I know there were many more than we could kind of handle tonight, but Judd and I got sort of carried away. But thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Judd. You're, you're a great guest for us. You're a great friend to our bookstore, An Unlikely Story. And we have real live Judd Winnick signed book plates. So if you click on the bottom of the screen, I can see that green button right there. You can get a book with Judd's signature, which is really cool and really special. So thank you again, Judd. Thanks a million. Can't wait to see you when the world opens up again. Absolutely, Jeff. Thank you. This is always, I look forward to this every year. This is a blast. So thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It's always great to see you. Thank you both so much. This was so great. Click that green button and order. If you don't have all of them, order all of them because they're amazing. <laughs> but order the new one. To get the book plate. We also have signed copies of Jeff's books, which is yes. awesome. Thank you both so much. Have a great night, everyone. All right. And I'm going to make us disappear. Thanks, guys. Take care.